story of cities. A new city. The mighty medieval capital now lost without a trace. With its mathematical layout and earthworks longer than the Great Wall of China, the new city was one of the best planned cities in the world, where London was a place of tea free and murder. So why is nothing left? This is the story of a lost medieval city you've probably never heard about. Benin City, originally known as Edo, was once the capital of a pre-colonial African empire located in what is now southern Nigeria. The Benin Empire was one of the oldest and most highly developed states in West Africa dating back to the 11th century. The Guinness Book of Records 1974 edition described the walls of Benin City and its surrounding kingdom as the world's largest earthworks carried out prior to the mechanical era. According to estimates by the new scientist Fred Pierce, Benin City walls were at one point four times longer than the Great Wall of China and consumed a hundred times more material than the Great Pyramid of Shells. Situated on a plain, Benin City was enclosed by massive walls in the south and deep dishes in the north. Beyond the city walls, numerous further walls were erected that separated the surrounding of the capital into around 500 distinct villages. Pierce wrote that this was extended for some 16,000 kilometers in all in a mosaic of more than 500 interconnected settlement boundaries. They covered 6,500 square kilometers and were all dug by the Edo people. They took an estimated 150 million hours of digging to construct and are perhaps the largest single archaeological phenomenon on the planet. Barely any trace of this world exists today. Benin City was also one of the first cities to have a semblance of street lighting, huge metal lamps, many feet high, were built and placed around the city, especially near the King's Palace. Fueled by palm oil, their burning wicks were lit at night to provide illumination for traffic to and fro from the palace. When the Portuguese first discovered the city in 1485, they were stunned to find this vast kingdom made of hundreds of interlocked cities and villages in the middle of the African jungle. They called it the, the Great City of Benin, at a time when there were barely any other places in Africa. The Europeans acknowledged as a city Indeed, they classified Benin City as one of the most beautiful and best planned cities in the world. In 1691, the Portuguese ship capital, Loarenco Pinto, observed Great Benin, where the king resides, is larger than Lisbon. All the streets run straight and as far as the eye can see. The houses are large, especially that of the king, which is richly decorated and has fine columns. The city is wealthy and industrious. It is so well governed that theft is unknown and the people live in such security that they have no doors to their houses. In contrast, London at the same time is described by Bruce Osiga, professor of English at the University of Virginia has been a city of tea-free, prostitution, murder, bribery, and a trifly black market made the medieval city ripe for exploitation by those with a skill 
for the quick blade or picking a pocket. African Fractus Pine City's planning and design was done according to careful rules of symmetry, proportionality, and reputation, now known as fracture design. The mathematician Ron Eglash, author of African Fractures, which examines the patterns underpinning archaeal architects, art, and design in the many parts of Africa, notes that the city and its surrounding villages were purposely laid out to form perfect fractures with similar shapes repeated in the rooms of each house and the house itself and the clusters of houses in the village in mathematically predictable patterns. As it puts in, when Europeans first came to Africa, they considered the architecture very disorganized and thus primitive. It never occurred to them that the Africans might have been using a form of mathematics that they hadn't even discovered yet. At the center of the city stood the king's court, from which extended 30 very straight broad streets, each about 120 feet wide. The main streets, which run at right angles to each other, had underground drainage made of a sucking impervious with an outlet to carry away storm water. Many narrower side and intersecting streets extended off them. In the middle of the streets were tough on which animals fed. Houses are built alongside the streets in good order. The one close to the other, writes the 17th century Dutch visitor of Frat Dapper. Adorned with gables and steps, they are usually broad with large galleries inside, especially so in the case of the houses of the nobility and divided many rooms which are separated by walls made of red clay very well erected. Dapper adds that wealthy residents kept these walls as shining and smooth by washing and rubbing as any wall in Holland can be made with chalk and they are like mirrors. The upper stories are made of the same sort of clay. Moreover, every house is provided with a well for the supply of fresh water. Family houses were divided into three sections. The central part was the husband's quarters, looking towards the road to the left, the wife's quarters, Oderie, and to the right, the young man's quarter, Yekogbe. Daily street lights in Benin City might have considered of large crowds going to even larger streets with people colorfully dressed some in the white, others in yellow, blue or green, and the septic captains acting as judges to resolve lawsuits, moderating debates in the numerous galleries, and arbitrating pretty petty conflicts in the markets. The early foreign explorers' description of Benin City portrayed it as a place free of crime and hunger with large streets and houses kept clean, a city filled with courteous, honest people and run by a centralized and highly sophisticated bureaucracy. The city was split into two divisions, each a smaller replication of the king's court comprising a sprawling series of compacts containing accommodation, workshops, and public buildings, interconnected by innumerable doors and passageways, all richly decorated with the art that made Benin famous. The city was literally covered in it. The interior walls of the court and compounds were decorated with horizontal ridge designs.
Agbe and clay carvings portraying animals, warriors, and other symbols of power. The carving would create contrasting patterns in the strong sunlight. Natural objects, pebbles of pieces of mica, were also pressed into the wet clay, while in the palaces, pillars were covered with bronze plagues, illustrating the victories and digs of former kings and nobles. At the height of his greatness in the 12th century, well before the start of the European Renaissance, the kings and nobles of Benin City patronized craftsmen and lavished them with gifts and wealth in return for their de depiction of the kings and dignitaries. Great exploits in intricate bronze sculptures. These works from Benin are equal to the very finest example of European casting techniques, wrote Professor Felix von Lucia, formerly of Berlin, a notological museum. Benvenuto Cellini could not have cast them better, nor could anyone else before or after him. Technically, these bronzes represent the very highest possible achievements. What impressed the first visiting Europeans most was the wealth, artistic beauty, and magnificence of the city. Immediately, European nations saw the opportunity to develop trade with the wealthy kingdom, importing ivory, palm oil, and pepper, and exporting guns. At the beginning of the 16th century, what quickly spread around Europe about the beautiful African city. And now visitors float in from all parts of Europe with ever glowing testimonies recorded in numerous voyage notes and illustrations. Lost World. Now, however, the great Benin city is lost to history. Its decline began in the 15th century. Sparked by internal conflicts, led to increasing European intrusion and slavery trade at the borders of the Benin Empire. Then, in 1897, the city was destroyed by British soldiers, looted, blown up, and burnt to the ground. My great parents were among the many who fled following the sacking of the city. They were members of the Allied Corps of the King's Doctors. Nowadays, while a modern Benin city has risen on the same plane, the ruins of its former grandeur, namesake, are not mentioned in any tourist guidebook to the area. They have not been preserved, nor as a miniature city of touristic replica being made to keep alive the memory of this great ancient city. A house composed of a courtyard in Upper Sagbon, known as Chief Enogi, a Koryogi house, probably built in the second half of the 19th century, is considered the only vitis that survives from Benin City. The house possesses features that match the horizontally fluctuous pillars, central inclusion, and carved decorations observed in the architecture of ancient Benin. Curious tourist tourists visiting Edo State in Nigeria are often shown places that might once have been part of the ancient city, but its walls and moats are nowhere to be seen. Perhaps a section of the great city wall, one of the world's largest man-made monuments, now lies bruised and battered, neglected and forgotten. Nigerian bush. A discontented Nigeria put it this way. Imagine if this monument was in England, US, Germany, Canada, or India. It would be the most visited place on earth and a tourist mecca for millions of the world's people. A morning spinner worth countless billions in annual tourist revenue. Instead, if you wish to get a glimpse into the glorious past of the ancient Benin Kingdom and a better understanding of this groundbreaking city. You are better off visiting the city bronze sculptures section 
of the British Museum in central London.